First question on this episode came from my guy, Mike Guy Game. He said, ain't great first question ever for me here. I've watched questions from subs and always wanted to, but never asked one myself. Well, hey, it's the first time for everything, baby. Welcome aboard, and I appreciate you sending this question. He said, uh, maybe it won't happen, but do you think we can bring back Marcus Peters and sign Zach Wow, so, so my guy, he wants to double dip. And hey, maybe by the time you see this video, maybe Zach Ertz will have determined where his next location will be or wh whatever team he'll go to next. But uh, I don't think the Ravens, well, well Zach Ertz, that's a possibility. Uh, well, as of right now, as of this recording. Um, but Marcus Peters, while it is technically a possibility since he's a free agent, uh, it ain't happening. It just, I just don't see it happening at all um they had every single opportunity in the world this past offseason to bring him back every opportunity because he didn't get signed till way late uh in the offseason but they didn't take it they did not take it they didn't take it and they signed rocky scene and then i mean well, i assume i think a lot of us assume rocky scene was going to be that number two corner but obviously brandon stevens he done stepped in and showed out but um marcus peters that that's that's a no i just i don't see that happening whatsoever uh he said um i actually was expecting Jalen armor davis to be what ronald darby is for us this year and you seen started off the year strong made some big plays against the bungles no that's not a typo uh but takeaways is in peace thing and it seems like we're missing that in a way hmm. okay I, I i can see how you're saying that especially in the secondary i mean geno stone he was getting take enough takeaways for everybody for a hot minute um, and hopefully he can get back to that too. Uh, but as far as takeaways, the yeah, Ravens they had well they have had actually a lot of takeaways and whatnot. Cause, but their defense has just been so strong that it hasn't all been it hasn't been all about takeaways. It's just been about keeping the opponent is keep away. So while they throwing some takeaways here and there, they play a lot of keep away, uh, keep the opponents away from the end zone, and that is extremely important as you already know. And he said, Humphrey hasn't been out there, and I think it's a good idea to test who we haven't seen compete just to see what we'll have later on in the year when it matters most, when Marlo will definitely be back. But it seems so weird. Maybe it's just me, but when Peter said, I think we ain't done, after they lost and then he solidified our win against the Titans the very next year, after we lost to them the year before, I just feel like this is the time where MP could show what he meant. He was coming back off injury and looked not himself last year, and I haven't seen him tackle the way he has for Vegas in a Raven in a uniform. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. Uh, yeah, Mar Marcus Peters, he was cool. He was cool. The energy was there. The vibe was there. Um, on the field, yeah, last year was rough. But, yeah, you're right. Context is important. He was coming back off of injury. Um, but now this year he got released due to lack of effort, due to poor tackling, due to business decisions. And, I mean, maybe he's doing it on purpose so he can come back to the Ravens. Maybe he's like, man, maybe they might give me one more shot, some. Like one one last ride. This is a, maybe he was gonna get a, do his own little Ray Lewis. Uh, this is my last ride speech, but um, nah. I I think Ravens are in a really good spot, and especially with their team. Like there have been some here and there, but overall they've been doing a very good job of tackling. There've been some missed tackles here and there, but overall, especially in the secondary, they've been doing a very very good job of tackling, wrapping up uh, open field tackling too, especially Ronald Darby. So with Marcus Peters, uh, that's an a. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, Zach Ertz again, maybe, but Marcus Peters, no. Now, back to something that you said. I was like, huh, because you said that um, maybe it's a good idea to test who we haven't seen compete just to see what we'll have later on in the year. No, 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 my friend, no. This is not the time to test stuff out. Uh-uh, no. Ravens sitting at 9-3, and three, like the number one seed is right there, right there. All they got to do, I mean, saying it like that, make it sound so easy, right? All they got to do is win these last five games, look at the number one seed. Yeah, that's tough. Um, but if if this was a uh, a throwaway year, if this season was done, then, oh, yeah, te test whoever you want to test. Throw whoever you want to throw out there. It don't even matter at this point. But it's not. So you, you can't do trial runs with this cornerback here, that safety there, and this linebacker there. This, uh, you, can't, you can't afford to do that right now because everything counts, and everything is of the es Everything is of the essence, literally everything. So, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you want to know what you got in Jalen Armour Davis. You want to know what you got in um, 
and uh, Pepe Williams. Um, you you want to know what you got in diff different different, but you'll find that out later. In Tuck, we trust. Next question came from my guy Rashawn. He said, "What's up, engraving the team? Keep it clean." I got a quick question. After the Chargers game, I started to get a little scared. I was scared because I was wondering if Justin Tucker was on a bit of a decline. I know a good amount of his misses this year were due to some block kicks, which, in my opinion, he can't really do much about. But some of the others have been uncharacteristic misses. I choose not to believe Mr. Tuck is declining. So I am now wondering if due to the long snapper change in the offseason, if that has anything to do with the missed field goals, because I believe we were not having these, this issue last year. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. And just like your new baby will be, <laughs> just like your new baby will be in about nine months, I'm out. And said, P.S., was it the long snapper that got hurt and we were replaced in the offseason just making sure I got the position right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, because Nick Moore. He was a long snapper before, and Tyler Ott, I want to say that's his name. He is a long snapper now. Um, I like. Have we seen any like bad snaps? Any snaps where Jordan Stout is having to reach up in the air and, and put it down real quick, and that messes up Justin Tucker's kick? I don't think so. I don't remember any. I don't recall any. So I believe maybe maybe Jordan Stout didn't get the laces out on some kid. I don't. But it's on JT. It's on Justin Tucker. And, yeah, he, he just been missing. And since we've been so spoiled with Justin Tucker year after year, ever since 2012, we've been spoiled, rotten with Justin Tucker. Because it's like, even like, even crazy field goals, there's these long field goals. When he's going out there, even if you think he's going to miss, you still know he's going to make it. You still know he's going to make it. But this year, nope. It ain't been like that. It ain't been like that. And it's like field goals that were once gimme field goals. Well, not even necessarily gimme field goals, but field goals that like normally JJD would hit. No, it, he doesn't miss, miss some of them. Now, again, like you mentioned, block kicks. Yeah, that can't do nothing about that. Can't do nothing about that. Like it's the same thing with Lamar. If he in the pocket and he getting ready to throw and somebody, boop, they knock it out of there. We can't do nothing about that. Can't do a thing about that. But the miss kicks, yeah. That's, that's JT. Is he on a decline? No. Oh. I, I think we won't know till next year. I think we, that, that'll be something that we won't know till next year. Because this year has been, has this been his worst year ever? I, I think it has been. And, and now, again, Justin Tucker, we, there's high standards for Justin Tucker. Extremely high standards for Justin Tucker. So saying this is his worst year ever, and it hasn't been all bad, of course, but... Just the misses, like you said, they are very uncharacteristic of him, and we're just not used to that. But as far as him possibly being on a decline, because I know that conversation has come up a lot amongst Ravens fans, and, and I, I get why, because we're not used to it. But I think that's something that we won't really be able to see until next season. So maybe when Nick Moore comes back or if they run with Tyler Ott again, I'm not sure what they're going to do. But um, but again, I don't think it's the long snapper, though. I think it's the one that's been kicking the ball. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, which free agent signing this offseason do you see us re-signing? Oh, okay. That's that's a good question right there. So who are the Ravens going to bring back? He said OBJ, uh, Kyle Vannoy, or Jadavian Clowney. Um, out of those three, ah, it's tricky, but I would put it in, in this order. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., Jadavian Clowney, like literally right behind him, maybe even right next to him. Uh, and then, but I don't think they'll bring back Kyle Vannoy. Um, they, but Odell Beckham Jr., uh, it, it hasn't been like this crazy statistical year for him, anything like that. Uh, but the way that he's, not only that he's embraced Baltimore, the city, and of course the team, but the way that the team has really embraced him. Uh, you can tell that with the Baltimore Ravens and Odell Beckham Jr., it's more than just on-field stuff. It's off-the-field stuff as well. It's his vibe. It's his energy. It's the leadership. It's his experience. Uh, it's his what he can teach to other guys. It's him just making sure, like, hey, Lamar, like, making sure Lamar even came back. So, but with the Baltimore Ravens, I, I think it's much deeper than just the contract, even though that contract for a 15, 15 mil guaranteed that he ain't playing over a year with the chance to earn three more mil. Like, oof, Ravens, like, they, they pay that man a lot of money. Um, but so that's why I would say Odell Beckham Jr. first. Now, Jadavian Clowney, now he he been doing the stuff on and off the field. 
So the vibe is there, the energy is there, the leadership is there, him just being happy is there. Uh, but on the field, he been balling, man. That dude is amazing. Uh, so that's why I will put him next to Odell Beckham Jr. And Kyle Vannoy, I, I don't think they'll bring him back. Even with Jadavion Clowney, I'm I'm not even a thousand percent convinced that they will bring him back. I would love them to, because y'all know me. I, I'm a Clowney guy all day. But I, I'm just, especially depending on how the season goes, uh, I'm not even convinced that they will bring him Now, if they, if they win the Super Bowl, then I definitely think that they will not bring him back. Um, I would love for them too, but I think like when you win the Super Bowl, in my opinion, I feel like teams get a bit, especially the Ravens, especially after uh, their first Super Bowl when they brought everybody back. But um, I feel like when you win the Super Bowl, you're a lot more lax. You're like, all right, hey, we, we won the Super Bowl. All right, we could test some more stuff out now. Let, we'll let that guy go. We'll let that guy walk. We'll trade that guy away. Remember Anquan Bolden? Like, Ravens won the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, won the Super Bowl. And then they were like, man, he's over in Africa right now helping people out. Let's trade him for a six-round pick. How about that? And then remember, uh, then a couple years later, Lodi Nada. Lodi Nada, Ravens, one of their best interior defensive linemen ever. One of the most disruptive ones. Um, then he got traded a couple years later to the Detroit Lions. Um, so, yeah, Torrey Smith, I think he was with the Ravens. After the Super Bowl, he was with the Ravens for like one or two more years. Um I think two, yeah, two more years because the first year was him and Jacoby Jones, and the second year was him and Steve Smith Senior. Then uh, he was he was out of there after that. Ravens tried though; they tried to sign him, but it just obviously didn't work out. The 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 San Francisco 49ers offered him five more five mil more overall than the Ravens contract was. I think um, Ravens contract was five years, thirty mil. San Francisco was five years, thirty five mil, I believe. Um, so. Yeah, but that, again, back to what I was saying. I, I feel like after, oh, and hopefully we get to even had this conversation. Everything's lining up for the Ravens to have this conversation, but hopefully they do. But after a Super Bowl, like teams are like, oh, okay, yeah, we we can afford to let that guy go. Um, they may not value certain people as much since it's like, all right, we don't accomplish the big goal. We we don't got it. All right, well, cool. Let, let's see what's next. Let's see if we could try something different way or whatnot. So, I mean, we'll we'll so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Like. Very, very soon Because the season is, is creeping up on us And it's, 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 it's going by really fast uh, He also said We must protect Lamar Jackson Ronnie has two years Around 100 mil Remaining on his contract According to an article I read If we cut him before June 1st We save $8 million And we'll have 17.8 mil Of dead money Is this a good thing to do Or should we wait to see If he can regain his old form See, that's the beauty of it um, you, you can have this conversation right now And you still got At least five games left to see what Ronnie Stanley can do. Ronnie Stanley and the Baltimore Ravens have, have had a much needed bye week. That bye week is over. They're back at practice now. So things are getting back ramped up. But um, with Ronnie Stanley, uh, you just hope that, all right, you had a nice nice rest, nice long rest break. Cool. All right, let's 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 see what you got now. Let's see if you could do a turnaround for this part of the season where we need you to be the best you could possibly be. Speaking of the offensive line, next question came from Mars. He said, hey, hello, Engraven. Hope you're doing well. Just want to send a not-so-quick question on our offensive line. Seeing as Ronnie Stanley's injury keeps being re-aggravated and Kevin Zeidler's contract is up soon, I was wondering your take on what I think could be our starting offensive line next year. Okay. Uh, Ronnie stays. We can move on from him. But historically, we have remained loyal to our stars, even as they regress. See Jimmy Smith and Brandon Williams for examples. We keep Morgan Moses for his last year on his contract and let Zeitler walk or retire unless he agrees to a team-friendly deal, uh, maybe three mil a year uh, to close out his career. Uh, so see, this is what I'm talking about, too. If Ravens win the Super Bowl, a lot of conversations would change, especially, too, another thing. When, when a team wins a Super Bowl, everybody who's on that Super Bowl team, especially if they played, their value skyrockets. It skyrockets. Even if they were one of the teams not so one not one of their best players. Their value skyrockets. So that can make teams feel like, all right, well, yeah, we'll let them go test the water somewhere else. We'll let them go see what his value is somewhere else. And we'll just go in another direction. So there's something to think about. Anyway, he said it. So that leaves us with Tyler Linderbaum. Um he got it on lock. 
and left guard. From what I understand, Andrew Voorhees was expected to transition from tackle to guard coming out of the draft. I think Ravens try him at left guard to ease him in. We spend a day two pick on a tackle, probably reaching if we pick one late in the first round as insurance for Stanley. John Simpson becomes a cap casualty if he doesn't win the starting spot to allow Lele to rotate in if needed. I know, long question, but what do you think? Any guys in the draft that you've heard about? Oh, no. Draft? No, 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 no. I don't hear about no draft right now. We in the middle of the season and Ravens in a good spot. Like, had the season been over, oh, pff, yeah, we're talking draft. Where are we going to pick in the first round? How high is our pick going to be? No, that question ain't happening right now. We ain't talking, thinking about that at all because we're trying to get through this year. Um, now, as far as uh, Voorhees, I, I feel like with him, and they what well, they drafted him in the sixth round because they traded back into the sixth round or was it the seventh round? Either one of the two. Um, they traded back in to get him, and essentially this is a, like a red shirt year for him. Um, but I feel like with him, he's a project and – you cannot rely on you can't put all your eggs into the Voorhees basket. So I, I I would not think that the Baltimore Ravens will go into next season being like, all right, he's gonna be a starter. They, I'm sure they will let him compete. But somebody coming off injury, like you you cannot rely on them to especially their rookie year. It's like I guess it's like David Ajabo. And I mean, well he did he ended up playing his rookie year, but he was hurt for most of the year. Uh but and then this year, eggs into the David Ajabo basket. Didn't work out uh, At least they didn't put all of them in there though But anyway um, With John Simpson uh, So you, you're saying you could see him stand Until like training camp to compete For that guard spot uh, And then he said with uh, with Zyla He could possibly either walk or retire Again if Ravens win Super Bowl Maybe he'd be like you know what Hey I done done it all I done played against every single team in the league Yeah I'm done That's it so, cause guy, again, you win the Super Bowl. That's the top of the top. That's it. Like, you achieve the ultimate goal. So that can oh, we we talked about how the team can view a lot of players, but that can make the players uh, view their careers differently too. Especially if you're on the back end of your career, you may think like, you know what, I'm done. I'm going out on top. I did it. I accomplished it. Or maybe the younger guys be like, hey, I did it. Let's go get another one. So, I mean, it, it all just depends. Older guys could obviously say that, too. Um, but, yeah, next year, our offensive line, uh, it could look a lot different. As far as he said he feels like it would be a reach if we picked the offensive lineman left tackle uh, in the first round. Um, is it a reach? Uh, it all depends on what they would do with Ronnie Stanley. Um, if Ronnie Stanley is going to stay, which is, I feel like it's just so up in the air right now. But if Ronnie Stanley is going to stay, and you're picking a left tackle in the first round. It's like, man, you want you want a really, really good left tackle to be ready because Ronnie Stanley, he's, he's missed a significant amount of time. But at the same time, you're investing a lot of money into Ronnie Stanley, a whole lot of money. So you, if you're spending a first-round pick on a left tackle, it's like, oof. That's like double investments. And, again, it is stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. But at the same time, you will have other needs that may be more pressing than left tackle if Ronnie Stanley is staying. So, so much depends on how the rest of the season goes, how the guys perform for the rest of the season. Um, because next year, like, so much is up in the air. It's so much that we don't know is going to go down. There's so many pending free agents, guys who could be cut, released, restructured, all that good stuff. Whew. Next offseason is going to be wild, as every offseason is, but next one is going to be really wild. Now, at least we got Lamar. So we ain't got to worry about it. We ain't got to go through all that headache and all that stress and drama like we did this past offseason. But next offseason, so many contracts expire, so many guys trying to get paid. You can't keep everybody. You can't pay everybody. And got guys, wanna, they don't want to get their bread. And, hey, who knows? There could be some guys that end up requesting to be traded. Next question came from my guy, Tank Bromanski. And now I got to give a special shout-out to my guy, Tank, because he just became a Team Keep It Clean patron. So, Tank, I, I appreciate you very much. He said, hope the fam is good and well. It's really cool to see how your brand is growing. Keep it up. Uh, might be silly, but, and, and I appreciate you. Thank you, man. He said, my question is, do you think NFL teams should scout talented sumo wrestlers for offensive and defensive line spots. Uh, I've been a sumo fan for a while, and those dudes' footwork is really impressive. They wouldn't let anyone through and are used to hand battles in order to either create leverage for shoving opponents back or exploiting the opposition's momentum to send them straight into the dirt. That would be something. 
And I said, hey, go for it. What's the worst that could happen? The guy don't like football and he don't play? Okay, well, you tried. So, yeah, might as well. Because if it, 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 will, it could be one of those things because we hear about it with rugby players. I mean, we were just talking about Haloti Nada earlier, and he was somebody who was big in, in the rugby. Uh, then he obviously made that transition to football, and he did just fine. Um, so if somebody's a sumo wrestler, obviously you got to be extremely physical. you got to be strong. Um, but you talked about footwork, and that's something that I didn't even realize sumo wrestlers had. So, hey, I'd say you could try it, see how it works. In the worst case scenario, it doesn't work out, and they stick to sumo. Next question came from my guy, Gareth, and he sent the video that I had a lot of people talking uh, recently about how the Ravens, by Alex Rollins NFL, is called How the Ravens Are Elite Without Superstars. And I thought that was very interesting. Uh, and he said, Engraving, uh, it's Gareth, can you make excuse me, a video on how we use our defense? This is the best breakdown I've seen yet now i haven't watched the video but just from the title alone uh how it is, is mentioned in the ravens uh and i've heard a lot of good things about the video i haven't got to watch it myself yet haven't had the time to yet um but just to sit thinking about the title and thinking about who are superstars on the baltimore ravens defense they don't have any they don't have any now a suit Listen, because I know some people are going get to get me wrong. A superstar, somebody like Lamar Jackson, that's a superstar. Somebody who's good on the football field, but also known across the whole NFL and known outside the NFL, too. An even bigger superstar than Lamar Jackson on the Baltimore Ravens, too, Odell Beckham Jr. That's super superstar status right there. They don't have that on defense. And that's not a bad thing because they're making it work. Not to say they don't have good players. We're not saying that. Not saying that they don't have good players because they have some really good ones. But they don't have a superstar on defense. They got some players that's definitely respected around the league. But we're talking about like su – it all depends on what type of superstar you're talking about. If you're talking about just superstar in general, okay, but like because in in even in the thumbnail, he got Ray Lewis in the back. And Ray Lewis was obviously – he was well-known. Uh, a Reed, so it, it seems like maybe maybe he might be talking about just superstar in the NFL, like one of those guys in the NFL. And if that's what he's talking about, then you got guys like Roquan Smith, uh, and you got guys like Marlon Humphrey, some of the best at their position. So if we're talking about that kind of superstar, some of the best at their positions in the NFL, then yeah, Ray Ravens got some of those. Now Kyle Hamilton, he is a uh, he's a wild card. Because he ain't a superstar yet. He is amazing. Um, but he ain't got no regular position. Yeah, oh, he's a safety. But he ain't no safety. He's just a baller. That's it. Matt Abike coming up. Is he one of the best at his position? He's one of the most productive right now, for sure. So he's he working his way up. Patrick Queen been doing this thing. Uh, so we, we got some guys. We got some guys. Superstars, I would just say the two. Roquan Smith and... Marlon Humphrey, David Clowney, he's been really, really good to see. But I, for me, I think superstar, somebody that has consistently been one of the best at their position for multiple years. And Roquan Smith and Marlon Humphrey, they, they can definitely say that. Anybody else on this defense who's been consistently one of the best at their position for years? I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. And of course, y'all know my memory is messed up, so maybe y'all will think of somebody before I do. But, yeah, though, I would definitely say those two. So, I guess we, we do have some superstars on this Baltimore Ravens defense and their elite. So, it's like a double whammy.